got slides somewhere. Uh, let's see if we can find those. Uh, first and foremost, I'm Chris Williams. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Hexy. Hexy, come. Good. <laughs> All right. Hexy here is a hexapod. Um, Hexy will be part and parcel of our demonstration. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everyone back there, keep your eyesight. Uh, watch this section. It says it's still connecting. What does it matter with your phone? Does anyone have a working phone other than Adam? Yeah, ask the hack. <laughs> Here, let me try recalling you again. Are you on the same Wi Fi? No, uh, he's on LTE. It doesn't matter. Anything? And no. All right, we'll do it the old fashioned way by ourselves. I'm going to unplug this for right now. I've got it. All right, so Hexy. Well, hello. Once again, bad camera. There, now I'm going to put this up here. Ooh, that's me looking at me. All right, so. And that's my screensaver. Because clearly that's what I wanted. And it's over. Uh, that was the talk. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> what is going on with this? <laughs> Best dog ever. He got us out to the, the party on time. Uh, since this is not working, uh, I'd like to take this moment to ask all of the volunteers and people who helped uh, put Thunder Planes together to come up to stage for uh, just a little bit. Don't worry. Nothing bad's going to happen. Or will it? OK, good. There's that. All right. So for those of you in the back, now that I got this working, I'm going to take this opportune time to show you. This is Hexy. Hexy's a hexapod. Hexapods are cool because they are robots. I'm going to make Hexy wave to everybody, wave to the nice people. <laughs> And you know we can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with Hexy. We can do, uh, you know, we can make Hexy lean back, go like a whoa. <laughs> but here's the scary thing that you should be aware of: is that we can also make Hexy replace any of you. Go ahead and work. <laughs> and just like this, I've made a programmer, and we're done. <laughs> So Hexy's going to help during our uh, thing. The other thing that Hexy does very well, very, very well. All right, let's get you back in order on the table. Um, and this is good for tonight. I don't know. That's There we go. Hexy, show these nice people how to dance. <laughs> so Hexy can do all these crazy things. So that's Hexy. Uh, I asked them to come up here. Uh, if you have never run a conference or you've never put on an event, it is a immeasurable amount of complexity, of time, and of effort. And I think uh, they deserve a big round of applause. And I wanted to bring them up on stage. <laughs> you guys thoroughly embarrassed? All right, you can go sit back down. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> All right, Hexy, let's get on with the show. Sit. <laughs> All right, I'm going to kill the servos so that way Hexy can stay with us. All right, on to the actual uh, show, as they say. This is a presentation I like to call Democratizing Hardware. Um, I am Chris Williams, as mentioned. If you don't know who Chris Williams is, good. No one else does. Uh, I'm more likely to be known as Voodoo Tiki God on the internet. Um, I'm just a person. So there's that. Uh, I am probably the only speaker using PowerPoint. That's how hipster I am. <laughs> but the question that you may be asking yourself is, who is this guy? Why is this person in front of us? Uh, as mentioned my name, that. But I also started a thing called JSConf, which also begot RobotsConf, which also did capital JS, and helped many, many different conferences get off the ground. Um, everything from making sure they don't lose money or don't go completely into debt doing it to actually creating a new and different ethos in the tech community. Um, we, in both of those events, I think stand at the very top, if not near the top, of diversity in speakers, which is kind of a cool thing. We do it quietly, though. 
so you probably haven't heard about it. Uh, I'm the creator of BeerJS. If you've ever been to a BeerJS, you're welcome. <laughs> if you haven't been, it's not about beer. It's about getting together and socializing. It's about uh, not having a speaker. It's about talking to one another and getting back to basics of social communication. I'm also uh, the proud creator of this beautiful thing here, the JS logo. Uh, that brought me to my highest point in life when it was on the Colbert Report. And ever since then, it's just been a downward spiral. <laughs> so there's that. Um, but more pertinent to the discussion today is that I am the author of Node Serial Port, which is the gateway between the web and software world and the crazy world of hardware. Uh, at this conference alone, we've had two hardware talks. And you see this regularly in JavaScript and web conferences over the last two years, is more and more of an infusion of hardware talks. And that's not by accident. There is a beautiful blend between those two, and that's the blend that we're going to talk about today. One of the key points that I'll, I'll point out is I'm the instigator of node copter, node bots, node rockets, and node boats. Yes, I said boats. We put geeks in water with electronics. What could go wrong? Um, and I'm founder CTO. That's my job. Uh, let's get back to the serial port thing, right? Serial. Who uses serial ports anymore? What in the world? Well, if you uh, were born, let's say, in the late 80s to the 90s, you probably have no idea what a serial port is. You probably have never heard this beautiful, beautiful sound. For a lot of us, this was the magic. Will we connect? Will we connect? And you didn't know it, but behind the scenes, they were doing all the work. I'll tell you what, the way this internet's expanding, I think we're going to have to take someone else on. And now I know for those of you who have never heard this sound before, you're kind of wondering, what's going on here? You're probably thinking to yourself, this sounds a lot like Skrillex. <laughs> I beg to differ, though. It is definitely different. That sound brings happiness. <laughs> All fun aside, uh, my quest, the reason why I am here, the reason why I do most of the things that I do, is that I like to take the hard out of hardware and bring the complex and make it available and accessible, make it simple, make it capable for anyone, regardless of who or where who they are or where they came from. Uh, that would have been weird if I'd finished it that way. Um, and make it available. I do this with hardware because I really want robots to take over. We've messed up as humans. Robots will fix it. Uh, and when I say this, I'm really trying to make robotics as simple as programming a web page. Today, in educational programs, your, your pre-K through 12 programs, they teach how to write web pages. And for the most part, it's pretty easy. We've even gotten them off a front page, for the most part. With that, I want to do the same sort of thing. I want to bring that Promethean fire down to everybody for robotics. And so to do this, I, need to, I needed to find some way to make it accessible. And much like a web page, JavaScript is a great bridge for that world. Node.js, for better or worse, has a good mixture of web programming and web mentality and systems programming. They have natural overlaps between each other. Hardware has interrupts. Node has an evented model, which are very similar. Objects in OOP, like what JavaScript sort of has, is uh, meant to model real objects. And in hardware, you can't get any more real than that. They both are single-threaded for the most part, which is actually very helpful for it. And yes, node underneath the covers is multi-threaded. But when you're rationalizing about it, you're just thinking about one operational or execution environment. And because of that, blocking, both in the hardware and a node, is a no-no. So there's great parallels that work together. Most importantly, for better or for worse, JavaScript allows almost anyone to write some level of code almost anywhere. There's not a concern about, I have to have a special laptop or a special compiler. 
As long as there's a browser, I can write JavaScript. Once again, for better, for worse. Uh, and I'm also not making any qualification on the quality of that code. So there's that. Uh, and this gives rise to the idea of a JavaScript robotics. And I sort of came up with the term node bots. The logo I didn't come up with, uh, except for the ugly yellow. That's my fault. Um, the node bots idea is to take this and actually create it. Create a very easy way that, much like you would operate or, inter or work with the DOM, work with robots. And what if we could do that? What if we could bring that complexity down to that simplicity? And anyone here, anyone out there, could now program robots. This sort of gave rise to a thing called NodeCopter. And for those of you who have never seen a NodeCopter, this is one. Uh, this is, that's the granddaddy. Uh, it's a bit bigger, hard to get through TSA. This is the new one, which is smaller, and surprisingly, they didn't stop me. Um, we are, it, it literally came out. I want to say a month ago. And uh, so we haven't fully hacked it yet, but I have gotten it to take off with JavaScript. But we're not going to do that this time. We're just going to go with the easy sort of layup. Is it angry? There we go. Um, so the beauty of a node copter is that you can use JavaScript to program a drone. You can buy a commercial off the shelf product and immediately start messing with it with JavaScript. So the beauty of this is that anyone can go get this and start working. You don't have to know, do I need this chip? Do I need that chip? How do I connect those up? And you can start, you know, your, your simple one is, OK, let me use the controller. Oh, don't tell me, oh, you don't have enough battery. <laughs> if it had battery, it would work better. Um, I forgot to charge it. This. Is a very powerful mechanism to get people to program. This is something that's transformational because it's something that you buy that anyone can go pick up and just start programming. This becomes the modern logo. Move the turtle forward, move it right. But now you're doing it in 3D space and with something that's kind of cool. That's the node copter. Node copter gave rise to a thing called Johnny Five, which is the first implementation of the NodeBots idea. Johnny Five is a library that you've probably heard throughout the day. Uh, it's authored by a gentleman named Rick Waldron, although gentleman might be a strong term. I'd go with a dapper fellow. Uh, the dapper fellow, Rick Waldron. Um, Johnny Five takes that idea of let's make DOM programming for robotics, implements it, and allows it to work. And what this really does in terms of power when you combine JavaScript and robots is it allows anyone to not just write robots, but do something that is very hard in the robotics domain, which is in real time change the robot. So if I wanted to, uh, we're going to go with this one. That should bring up code. So this up here is an Arduino Uno. Um, it's sort of the heart and the blood and the soul and the spirit, the original uh, piece of NodeBots. So the Arduino Uno, I can connect to it as a five board. It'll figure out all the magic. On ready, hey, that looks a lot like document on ready, intentionally. We're going to run this. We enumerate out a pin. We say it's an LED, and we get it to strobe every 500 milliseconds. And then we're going to inject it into a REPL. Watch this. Node Arduino. All right, it's booting up that, connecting to our Arduino, connecting to our Arduino. The REPL's initialized. Um, LED is not defined. Well, that's a bummer. I can't even get the LED demo to work. Oh, I know why. Because Hexy was getting the commands. <laughs> well, that's awkward. 
<laughs> Hexi starts flashing us. There we go. And now we've just created a rave. Hey, well, I thought there was going to be a party, and I have made it. Um, but like I said, the power here is that LED gets dumped in. So now I have access to the LED in JavaScript in real time. So I can do LED off. Oh, no, it's LED stop, because it's running an animation. That stops it. LED off turns it off. LED on will obviously turn it on. LED pulse doesn't work. Oh. LED poles, that doesn't work. LED pulse. Um, and this is a power that very, you know, if you if you haven't worked with robotics, it seems like, okay, that's pretty obvious, right? But this sort of power is pretty much unheard of in the robotics domain. The ability to change the world at any given time, bringing those constructs into the real time. And then you can bridge that up now because it's Node, or more importantly, because it's JavaScript, all the way out to the front end. So you can control from browser through back to hardware. It's amazing. And you, it is always open, so you can always change that world. In order for this to work, the other side of it had to come to a middle point. And I don't want to gloss that over. So if you've never heard of the maker movement, I strongly suggest if you take anything out of this, look this up, and more importantly, go find a maker space in your own area. The maker movement is a sort of get back to actual building, get back to physically creating things in the world, and doing it in much the open source fashion that we're familiar with in a web and software discipline. Um, think of it as like the modern version of shop with robots. It's sort of a good blend. And GitHub thrown in there somehow. So the Arduino, as I mentioned, is the heart and soul, the original beating piece. And what it does is allows you never to have to write the archaic Arduino sort of like C code. You can just stay with JavaScript. But it doesn't stop there. Due to the maker movement, there is a huge, and the fact that the Arduino is open source, there's a huge movement to create new, different, novel ways of <laughs> utilizing an Arduino style microcontroller and affording that upward. One of which is the Spark, which we have over here, and I'll show you it in a second, and Beagle Board, and Intel has a chip out there. They have two chips now, the Edison and Galileo, Electric Imp, Tesla, Pinocchio, Esperino. It's crazy. And they all have their special disciplines. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into it. If you're in Cassandra's talk, or if you're watching this at home, go see Cassandra's talk. We'll wait. OK. Um, those, are, those afford you different things. And they each do something very, very well. And that's the beautiful part, is we can explore this domain all in parallel. So what I'm going to do now, and this is one of the beautiful, most beautiful parts, I'd say, about, all right, I'm going to have to bring this over here. This is the code to control a Spark core. It's the same code. So I'm going to take the code I was running on an Arduino, and I'm going to put it on a Spark. And normally, that would mean having to rewrite the whole thing. But in this case, you don't. So I've got to get out of this REPL. Uh, no uh, source env. I've got to get my environment variables in. Node spark. Oh, oh, close, close. Hold on. Am I on the right Wi Fi? Nope. This is that awkward dance where it doesn't actually. The iPhone has that stupid thing where you got to turn it off and turn it back on. Um, OK. So with this, same code, both Arduino and Spark haven't changed the code. I'm going to run it. If I can get into the right thing, code Spark. Boom. It's running. now. 
Same thing that I said before, we're in a REPL. I can do all of the same constructs on this. There's no wires connecting us. I'm going through Wi-Fi completely. I've changed communication medium. I've changed microcontroller. I've changed everything but the code. I mean, that's a pretty big deal, um, in case you didn't know. But it's uh, one of the beautiful things, LED dot stop. Good typing, Chris. And it stopped. LED on. It's on. LED off. It's off. Incredibly, incredibly powerful. Made very accessible and easy. And that's not just for these two cases. It's also the case for Pinocchio, sometime soon for the Tesla. The Imp has one in as well, and the Galileo has one as well, as does the BeagleBone. All of them work in this infrastructure. It is amazing. That coupled with the 3D printers, the CNC lasers, or the CNC routers, lasers, we have a bright, amazing world where you can not just change stuff, but physically create ideas, share designs all the way around the world, and control it in real time. What it does is it democratizes hardware. It makes it accessible for everybody. And it's incredibly powerful. Examples of some of these democratized hardware pieces. If you were to go buy a robot kit, uh, let's say any more than about a year ago, it would run you about 150 plus dollars. Pavel, uh, I should have had the video of him saying his name. Uh, one of our friends in the NodeBots community, Pavel, created a sumo bot that runs $35 total. And that's amazing. It's woodcut. They connect up. They only can connect one way. So it's a kit that you get, and you can do it on your own. Or you can go cut it yourself. It's made by developers, $35, available to all, open source. Just go download and make your own Pavel bot. You can 3D print it if you don't want to do wood. It works perfectly fine. Going further than that, Flexbot, much like these drones, Flexbot has a full 3D printed drone, quadcopter, made available to everyone at about a $50 price point. Controllable by, yep, JavaScript. OpenROV, going on the other end of it. Normally, an underwater exploration device costs you, let's say, 100000 at best. To go underneath water, programmatically report back, send streaming HD video, or taking pictures. This one runs, yep, you guessed it, Node.js, inside. Completely controlled, underwater, oceanographic, capable vehicle. Also rockets. I mean, who doesn't love shooting stuff up in the air and potentially killing people? We uh, brought rockets into the foray at JSConf this year. Um, individuals would program telemetry, uh, when the parachutes would deploy, how much water pressure was built up before it shot the rocket. All of these things fully controlled in the JavaScript domain and through the REPL, so you can control it in real time. The most important for me is a thing called little bits. If you don't know what little bits are and you have kids anywhere near you, you owe it to them and you owe it to everybody else in the room to have a set of little bits that you can play with with them. Little bits are electronic or magnetically connected connector or circuits. So like in this case, detect when the sun comes up and start brewing my coffee. Don't actually magnetically connect the coffee machine. It's just a switch. Uh, at a certain time, feed my fish. And then let my phone know. <laughs> and the final one, which every SEO expert needs to have. Every time I'm tweeted about, let my ego inflate. Oh, much like normal Twitter. Um, little bits are fun. Little bits are great. Little bits for their cloud component, also JavaScript. Cool. You could make the contention, and someone already has, so I'm going to just let uh, Dean here take care of that. But I would agree with this that one of the great business cases for JavaScript itself is Node Serial Port. 
You could make the contention that Node is uh, up there as well, but I mean, I would go so far as the ability to control robots in an accessible manner cannot be understated. And here's why. Let's peer into the future. As the world population continues to grow, we are looking at about 9 billion people on the Earth by 2040. The curve doesn't go linear. The curve goes up. Most startups would love to have that curve, by the way. <coughs> A point in that that we have never seen before is that our population is drastically older, skewed to the older demographic than ever before. If you look here, we have a huge baby boomer tsunami, as the, US, uh, as the world, UN world population calls it, about to hit us in 2020, which is to say that all of the baby boomers will now need assistive care. They will need people to watch over them. They also will not be capable of working, which means we have a huge problem. And it's not just us. The whole world has to go through that as well. Shown differently, the generational shift in the next 10 years to 2020, or not even uh, 10 years, to just 2020, six years, we go from a generation that's you know, sort of in the middle to a rapidly decline and the millennials are fully intact. And there is little to no information conveyance from the boomers to the millennials. And the generation in between, Gen X, just stays constant. We are swapping out whole groups of human society, whole groups of human knowledge with no transformation time, with no conveyance time. So the only way we get through this is to make all that knowledge available and accessible to everyone. Intel Labs is quoted as saying that trends are already indicating that growing numbers of jobs will require significantly more complex sets of interdisciplinary skills. Robotics provides those interdisciplinary skills. To make a hexapod isn't like programming. You don't just smack keys. It is a beautiful, creative thing. There is physical creation, physical manifestation. It's closer to poetry than it is coding in the traditional sense. In order for us to get through this, we have to have democratized access, democratized knowledge, and hopefully with those two, we can affect societal change. And it's here today, but it's not democratized. If you've ever been to Disney World in the last six months, they band and tag everybody walking through the park. That information is known not by everyone, but just to a small few. There is a land grab right now for this technology, this knowledge. How do we track people? How do we gain all this information? How do we keep it in our bank, not anyone else's? And that only works so long as everyone either doesn't care or doesn't, isn't educated to the point that they can stand up against it. And so I would contend that we need a modern education platform. And not one that is just STEM, though STEM is important, but the blend of STEM and the arts, a blend of logic and creativity, a blend of art and of science. And the reason why, oh, oh I just tipped my hand. The reason why is this. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to scare you. This is programmable matter. We have figured out how to create matter how to change matter by just changing voltage. So I can make that chair into a table by applying a different voltage, a different flow of electrons to a fabric. We can change the color. You can change anything using this. We can go into depth over uh, beverages tonight about how, but programmable matter, if left solely in the hands of the elite, is going to be disastrous. It needs to be available for all. I would love to see JavaScript programming matter. Then we have a magical, magical world. This coming tech revolution is just right around the corner. Uh, no more than, I think, a day ago, Mozilla and their open policy and advocacy group made this quote. Democracy requires participation and agitation. 
Today, it also requires freedom fighters with computer science degrees. It's fundamentally different. We now have to allow that technology and that knowledge to be available to everyone. I would go further than just degrees and say that it's strictly just the knowledge. And that's why I've brought down node bots. That's why I, have, I want to give everyone the ability to access robots. That's why I want to democratize hardware, because the future is now. And you have to start today for what you want the world to be like tomorrow. Thank you very much. I don't know if I have any time, but I can take any questions if there are any questions. No questions? Perfect. So I answered everything. I'll turn the show over to you all. Thank you, everyone.